Hello everyone and welcome to our webinar on getting started with Formstack documents. My name is Ryan Jorgensen and I am a customer success enablement manager here at Formstack. Now whether you're new to Formstack or you're an existing customer looking for a refresher, this is going to be a great webinar for that. Uh, for our agenda today, we have a demo where we're going to be going over navigating and best practices for our Formstack documents product, as well as how to create merge fields, signature tags, and what if statements on your first document. Uh, if at any point during our webinar, you have a question concerning the content that we're going over today, or just in general about Formstack documents, we do have a live moderator who will be monitoring the chat and should be able to help with answering any of your questions. Now, if for some reason we're unable to get to your question, we will go over some great resources for you at the end to help with learning our product. Uh, if you do have a specific question regarding your account, we would ask for you to connect with your account manager or customer success manager. Let's go ahead and jump into our Formstack documents demo. Okay, for this example, we're gonna be creating an offer letter document and going over some best practices on how to test and set it up for signature to the new hire, as well as any additional signers if needed. To begin, you'll notice multiple tabs in the black bar across the top of your screen. Starting with our homepage here on the left, this is where you'll see your total usage and an outline of how our documents uh, work from creating or uploading your template to setting up your delivery and then merging and generating your document. There are a lot of great resources for you below as you click through each step. And one thing to note, you're gonna hear me often reference a document or template during this webinar. These are interchangeable and both refer to document shells that are created within this product. These can contain both static information that is shown each time, as well as dynamic information that could be populated from fields on a form or another source. Moving on next to the home tab here at the top, we have our documents tab where we will be spending most of our time today. And then it's also worth mentioning that we have our data routing tab which can be used to automatically send incoming data to multiple documents on your account. For instance, let's say you have an application form as your data source and a different document or letter that would be sent out depending on how a form is filled out. You could, you could configure a data route to send a specific document based on that configuration. So let's go ahead with our example and click on the documents tab to discuss the options for this page. On the landing page is where all of your documents or templates will live right here in the middle. You can set up a folder structure to keep your documents organized just like I've done here, but you will also notice a search bar to the right hand side of your screen, which will allow you to quickly search for any particular document. So to get started, to create a document, the first step is to click on the new document button on the top left side of your screen. You will uh, receive a pop-up box instructing you to name your document, which we will go ahead and do. And then from there, you will be prompted to select how you want to set up your document template. You have the following options. So you can either upload a document that you have already created. This could be a Word, fillable PDF or Excel document. You can use a pre-existing template from our library, or you can build a document from scratch. For our example, we're gonna build our document from scratch using our in-house document builder. I'm gonna go ahead and select that option. And then we have our builder here. So the builder is where you can create that document that you want generated. On the center of the page here, you will notice a blank space, and this is where you can add any language or verbiage needed on the document to customize it to your liking. To start, you will need to add merge fields. So merge fields tell the form or your data source where to put the data on the document. Using our new hire offer letter example, if we were to create a name merge field, 
This would tell our new hire form or data source where to put the candidate's name on this offer letter. To add a merge field, you can either write out the field in a certain format, or you can click the insert button right here on the right hand side of your screen. So we're going to go ahead and create a merge field for the name example that we were just talking about. Uh, when creating your merge fields, there are a few simple rules you need to follow in order to ensure that your merge field is successful. First, all merge fields, they must start with a curly bracket immediately followed by a dollar sign and then must end in a closing curly bracket. The use of any additional special characters or spaces will cause the merge field not to work. At most, you can use an underscore instead of a hyphen when necessary, uh, but for this example, we can see the name merge field we, we inserted here follows all of the right criteria. For our document today, we're gonna add multiple merge fields. So I'm gonna click on the insert option on the right to add a few more fields for things like our address, our email, phone number, position applied for, uh, reference as well. Just finish up here. So while adding your merge fields, you'll also notice a few other options. And let's go ahead and take a look at if else statements but also adding our signature tags. So starting out with adding a signature, like we had explained in our example, uh, we can click on the e-signature tag option over here. And then you'll notice that Formstack Documents is compatible with several different types of e-signature platforms. But for this example, we wanna select Formstack Sign from the dropdown and then select the Insert Tag option. You'll now see a signature tag where the signature can be placed. A few things about this tag, so you can duplicate the sign tag if the same signer will be signing in multiple places, uh, but you can also replace the one with a two if you plan on having more than one signer. So you could have signer one here, signer two here. Uh, it's also important to change the color of your sign tag to the same color of the background in order for the tag to blend into the background. If you keep the tag with the black text, then when the signature comes through, you'll see the signature, but you'll also see the black text. Now that we've set that up, let's also take a look at if else statements. Let's say we wanna show or hide a body of text on this document that depends on a value from the data source that's populating the document. In this case, it could be from our form. To get started, let's name that field term one, just as an example, and then we wanna set the condition. Uh, for this, we want to set it to equals, but there are several other options that you can see here from this dropdown. Next to the condition, we wanna set the value as yes, in order to show the text when that value comes through. I'll go ahead and click on insert if statement, and then we wanna write that text that we're looking to show or hide based on the value where the ellipsis is. That's it for setting up our document, but let's take a look at a few other options on this page while we're here. I'm just gonna save, uh, but below our insert option, we have our version history that lets us select previous versions that we might have saved. And below that, we have our advanced mode for editing in HTML, like you can see here. And then we also have more options, as you can see here, if you'd like to add a header or footer to your document. And then lastly, we do have a new builder that you can switch to for a more updated look and feel. But for today's demo, we wanted to show you the proper syntax for creating merge fields that could also be used in your document, uh, whether you're creating that document outside of our document builder. And that's why we went with the classic editor. Moving forward, let's take a look at our settings tab located to the right of our document builder. 
A few important things to draw your attention to is the document name, the document output, the size of the document, the file name, and last but not least, the status of that document. For our example, I want to change the file name to the name field that we created earlier. This will, uh, if I do this, it's going to be easy to identify each document that comes through. Please note that you may use any field as a prefix to the document name. Also, while building and testing, we recommend putting your document in test mode so they don't count towards your merge limits. Now, if you don't know already, a merge is the successful delivery of a created document in Formstack to an outside location. Each account has a different merge limit based on the plan that you've chosen, and you should be able to see your total merge limit uh, in your settings. So to put the document into test mode, you can do this by clicking the test mode radio button under the status section at the bottom of the settings page. It's also important to note, this will add a watermark sample to your document, which can be removed once you're ready to go live by selecting the active radio button on the same location. As a best practice, please make sure that you are saving while you are making changes to your documents uh, or to your settings. And then moving to the right of our settings tab, we are going to explore the test tab. The test tab is an easy way to preview what your document output will look like. This can be done by filling information into the field that you'd like to test and then clicking on the test document option at the bottom. A document will then be downloaded for you to review. Let's go ahead and download and well, we're going to create a test document. So we'll just fill out all of the merge fields that we created, including our if else statement, where we want to use yes in order to meet the specific criteria to show the terms that we had wrapped the statement around. All right, now we'll go ahead and download. So you can see the document here with all of the previous values we used for each merge field and now that we've covered how to test your document, we're going to take a look at the next tab, which is delivery. Here is where we can determine and set up where we want our documents to go after they've been created. If you click on the new delivery button on the right hand side, you will see a list of all of the places you can have your document delivered to. Please note that you can have your document delivered in multiple places at the same time. However, each separate delivery is going to count as a separate merge and will go against your monthly or annual total. One of the easiest and most common delivery types is email. So let's walk through that. We're going to select email as the delivery option here. And then the first option when setting up this delivery is the location, which can either be sent to a specific address or you can send it to a field from the form or document. For our example, um, I could select the email field that my candidate is filling out from our form to send them the offer letter. So let's go ahead and set that up for this example. Moving down the screen, you will also notice you can update who the email is sent from, the subject of the email, as well as the body of the email itself. For our example, I'm going to change our subject to form stack offer letter, and then we'll add some information to the body. And it'll look something like this. So we'll say, hello, please see the attached copy of your offer letter. We will be in touch to schedule some next steps. Thanks, HR team. To further customize your message, you do have the ability to add merge fields to pre-populate with the information from your data. So today, let's add a name merge field after the word hello and then save our delivery. In addition, you could also set up an additional email if you wanted to send this offer letter to your HR team or someone else more specific. Uh, for each delivery, the pop-up will look a little bit different. Uh, most of them will require you to log in to whatever third-party tool you are trying to deliver the document to and select where you want it delivered to on that specific tool. Email delivery is just one of the many options. 
Uh, in our example, though, we also wanted our candidate and CEO to sign the offer letter. This delivery section is where you could go to set up your delivery with form stock sign for e-signature. So let's go over what this would look like. You go ahead and select form stack sign, just like we did with our previous example. We then want to set the subject and who will be signing the document. We can assign the signee according to the email merge field on the document, or we could set something that's more static. Let's say we always wanted the first signer to go to the person accepting the offer letter. We could set that up as the first participant uh, if you wanted to have multiple signers or participants, you could add another participant here, as you can see, and then set them up like we did with the first with either a static email or from a merge field. This is a great option. If you have someone like the CEO or someone else reviewing the initial signers document, it's also worth mentioning that if you click on more options here at the bottom, this is a big one, uh, you can delay other deliveries like the final email until the signing process has been completed. Lastly, we have our reports page where you can review your merge history for specific time periods. This is a great place if you'd like to get a better understanding of how often merges or documents are being generated on your account. But that's it for today's webinar on Formstack documents. We showed you how to create your first document, how to set up merge fields, and how to configure where these documents can be delivered. If you ever have any questions or concerns, Please remember that you can always click on this eye icon on the top right to get in touch with our support team or search for any useful articles on our site. For instance, I know at the beginning of our webinar, I mentioned data routing as a feature for a use case where there might be multiple documents that need to be sent out or potentially specific documents. Uh, we have an entire section dedicated to the different ways you could use this feature on our help site just like you can see here. So looking over our resources, we have our help center that we did mention earlier during our demo, but we also have our certification program that's currently free. It's a great tool for learning more about not just Formstack documents, but if you were also interested in exploring our other product offerings, like Formstack Sign or Formstack Forms. Well, thank you again for attending and hope you have a great rest of your day.